One thing that was always left into the hands of the people was the ethics. Can you talk about how you would fuse intelligence or data sources? How do we implement that to make sure we do the right thing? Look, what's very important to know is that the United States Army and all services in the United States are ethical. Take space, stratospheric, aerial, or ground sensors. AI can be used to process that information very, very quickly, but at the end of the day, the human makes the decision. Hello everyone, my name is Travis Kelly and I have the distinct honor to be here today with Lieutenant General Ross Kaufman, who's currently commanding 26,000 troops as a part of the Army's Future Command. I've had the distinct honor of serving with you, sir. And for the, the WDG initiative, I thought it was just proper to bring you on and ask you a question. And so I think of the policies that, that regulated our, our activities and missions and the regulations that were governed by the Commander in Chief and Congress and, and the appointed military officers. I think of the, the structure and the adaptability that we had as we were given a budget resources and assets to deploy to an environment and to fight and win for our great nation. The one thing that was always left into the hands of the people was the ethics, right? So when we talk about military and, and AI ethics, can you talk about how you would fuse intelligence or data sources to make decisions that can support ground force commanders to win, knowing that you made the ethical decision versus the capability of a machine making that decision for you and how you feel about that. Yeah, thanks, Travis. Look, what's very important to know is that the United States Army and all services in the United States are ethical. Our adversaries are not necessarily. Mm. I'll give you a great example. We will only deliver lethal munitions when we identify that as a enemy combatant. Our adversaries will shoot on detect. So you think about that at three kilometers, the enemy can't tell whether it's friend, foe, or civilian, but they are willing to pull the trigger. We are not. We must identify our adversary to do that. Now, when you start layering in artificial intelligence and the capabilities, take space, stratospheric, aerial, or ground sensors, and the amount of data that's coming in off of those. And AI can be used to process that information very, very quickly but at the end of the day, the human makes the decision. And that's the policy, that a commander or a human is involved in that decision. And I often tease out in people's minds, well, what is a decision? If I know that all friendlies are south of a certain road or phase line, and I can confirm that 100%, and understand where all the population centers are, if I identify a tank north of that, can I go weapons free? Do I have to go weapons tight? Meaning, can I shoot at anything that I've identified as a tank? And then when you look at algorithms and it comes to the most valuable piece of an algorithm is it returns a confidence level. So it'll say, I am 99.9% .9 sure that that's a Russian tank. Is that good enough? Because it's probably better than a human. So as we get human in the loop, those things start to play in policy. And that discussion is fascinating. And the attorneys will spend hours and hours debating this. But the reality is, is that we must be grounded in ethics in order to deliver lethal and sometimes non-lethal effects on the battlefield. And we're committed to that. Absolutely. You know, sir, I was thinking about, you know, when I was in, in Jordan with uh, General Wallace, the deputy chops, the process that we had to go through, right? You had the two minute battle drill, you've got all these confirmations, you know where the enemy's at, you know where the friendlies are at, and you have to determine the collateral damage expectancy and you're fusing all those intelligence sources and looking at all your assets and resources from underground to space and how you're gonna allocate those assets and resources to that ground force that's in this particular situation. It always blew my mind that within two minutes we could do all of this and at the same time the general's talking to the attorney, right? right. To make sure that we're following the policy. We understand the regulations we're governed under. We have the proper structure to deliver the assets and the resources against 
these various domains in space from underground. How do we implement that to make sure we do the right thing? I was always baffled just how fast that process could be implemented. Can you talk about what were the challenges for you ethically as we've been through the 20 year war? Yeah, so I can remember invading into Iraq, 2003. You saw it on the news. It was total brownout. Couldn't see anything, but we had J stars in the air and we had moving target indicators. What people may not understand is that we can see ground elements moving. We don't know what they are. We just know that they're moving. And they were coming in our flank. It was 14 of them. And they were coming directly for the division. We had a B-52 on station. And the decision was, do you strike that target or not? And the attorney said, you absolutely have the authority to strike that target. And I won't tell you the ending, but we have the authorities. It's up to commanders to make the decision of what you do. Right, and then that really says, right, you're not depending on that AI. It's a tool that you can use, but at the end of the day, and, and we have to give our initials, right, before we conduct a strike. It's about a commander. AI can help staff process. It can process data faster than we could ever imagine. But at the end of the day, the human, that woman or man in uniform, must make decisions that are ethical and they're in the best interest of this nation. Ah, well, thank you so much, sir. I really want to thank you for your service. Again, it was an absolute honor to serve with you. I'll never forget our rotation in TC together. Thank you for giving me all those assets when everybody got killed except my troop. I really enjoyed that time. <laughs> it's a memorable moment in my life. And, and I'll tell you, just, you know, you, General Van Wagenen, if you're watching it, you two are very influential in my life. You always increase the morale with, with the troops. I've always been interested in like following your path. Like a lot of us look up to those that are doing things that we want to do. And we look at your path and we say, how do we get there? But your path wasn't that traditional path. It was a little curved and it was different. So it wasn't so clear, but it's been awesome just watching you continue to climb. And I know you've done it from a servant's heart. And I just want to say thank you for your service and all that you've done for this nation. I appreciate it, Travis. Thank you very much. Yes, sir.